you, man? I'm doing fine. I'm excited that I can hear you. For some reason, I've been uh, I've been having some issues with my uh, with my Zoom uh, uh, volume. I'm not sure why, but it's not. You no, know, I, I hate right tech now. trouble. I hate tech trouble. We're uh, we're digging out of uh, just storm after storm after storm here in the uh, Reno area. Oh my God! Yeah, we've been. You have, you have so snow on the ground there years. in Reno. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now it's, uh, it's a winter wonderland outside. Yeah. I-80 I has been closed, um, on and off for the last four or five days. It's, uh, I've been here for about 25 years since 1999 and I have never seen a winter this bad. Wow. Early spring, as they might say here on, uh, yeah. the first. Well, we had, I mean, we haven't had any buildup, but we've had snow in Seattle last week, a bunch, you know, yeah. just kind of scattered, you know, which is very rare for us. Yeah. So it's, it's something, it's a big deal. There's a lot going on. Kind of crazy, man. Uh, Stone, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. I've been such a huge fan of Pearl Jam over the years. It's really a, a, quite an honor to be able to speak with you, man. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, your label, Loose Groove Records, now you started way back in 94, like you needed something else to add to the plate back in the, uh, the crazy heyday of 94. I know. <laughs> uh, Queens of the Stone Age, perhaps the, the biggest signing uh, uh, thus far at that point in time. And that said, you called it a day back in 2000. What in the world inspired you to jump back into the label owner game, especially with the advent of, you know, social media and such? Um, you know, mostly it's about my connection and friendship with Regan Hagar, uh, my partner at Loose Groove, uh, one of my two partners. You know, Regan and I were in Brad together and um, have always been um, connected uh, musically for, for a really long time. And, and so in a way, it was an opportunity for us to, um, to look back in the past. I think it also has to do with the nature of being an artist and and um and and you tend to kind of you look forward and you also look back and some of the sort of the sort of the the roots of where you came from and sort of the things that you love the most as a kid and as a young adult um you 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 sort of still connect to those things and look at them in different ways so i think there was an opportunity um one that uh i had been working on some music with painted shield um, and I knew that I wanted to put that out and was figuring out what that could look like. Um, we had some Brad music that we had been working on and that we were thinking we were going to put out together, um, Regan and I. And um, and that was something that um, was sort of lurking about. And then, um, you know, we got a call from Michael Goldstone, who is the guy that signed uh, Mother Love Bone and um, and uh, and Pearl Jam. And, and I was asking him about labels and I was talking to him about stuff. And he said, well, you should you should talk to Billie Jean about it. She's over mm -hmm. at the Orchard. And so then it just sort of snowballed. We had this opportunity. Uh, Billie Jean was interested. We had this Pain and Shield record. We got a Brad record coming. And then we started looking at signing some new bands. And and Tiger Cub was one of the very first ones that that sort of Billie Jean brought our attention to. And uh, we were immediately like, this is, you know, it has an element of Queens of the Stone Age. Um, there, Jamie's an incredible songwriter, guitar player, artist, um, and and sort of all around sort of visionary in terms of 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 creating a band and a mystique. Um, and they're a great live band. And I think ultimately that's where we feel like we can uh, be helpful is is helping sort of younger bands navigate those those first five years of, of establishing themselves and, and sort of trying to help them make good decisions about the sort of the long-term uh, journey of, of, you know, trying to make a band succeed and trying to make it work as a business. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, the year 2000, the year 2023, it's like a night and day difference from a technological standpoint, yeah. you know, with the, the pervasiveness of digital Stone, I'm curious, have you found uh, this go around, especially with your talented team, um, to be easier, to be more difficult, uh, about the same or just different than before? I mean, in a you lot know, of we, ways, an artist, originally Loose Goof sold no records. So, we, we know, yeah. we, we, we did a lot of work and we and we sort of signed a lot of bands and kind of attempted things. But even Queens of the Stone Age didn't really start selling until after you know, they went to Universal. So 
we were still, I don't think we knew what we were doing back then. And we continue to not know what we're yeah. doing in this day. Uh, but we do have a lot of support and a lot of help. And we've had some great success with Queens of the Stone Age, particularly at radio and particularly going a little bit more old school route of, of touring word of mouth and radio. And it hasn't been driven um, as much by sort of social media, which, um, you know, one, we want to know more. And of course, we want to utilize every, you know, uh, tool uh, that's out there to kind of help elevate the bands. But um, we're also, uh, you know, we're a little bit dinosaurs and we're a little bit, um, you know, sold on the on really the, the, the touring and and um, and getting out and, and and creating a live show is really the long term strategy for rock bands to succeed, you know, long term. Yeah. Um, and and being able to have your, you know, that venue for the night, you control that venue, you bring your, you know, your people are going to show up, you're going to be able to have whatever kind of interaction you want to have, you're going to be able to use that venue to sell things that, you know, that are related that that you can continue to control. So it's an important aspect of kind of looking back at the that sort of the old nuts and bolts side of it as well. Hmm. You discover this new band, Tiger Cub, that you mentioned back in 2021. In fact, you were so excited uh, about them that you basically made them a, a, an offer via, via Twitter. What, what did you hear in them? I mean, what what was it with Tiger Cub that you went, oh, my God, I have got to have these guys on the label. I want to help develop them. I mean, I think it's a combination of 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 riffs and and really hearing this sort of heavy guitar driven um sort of music um really groove oriented um but also a melodic um singer who is really um uh, a, a, a great lyricist i think it's that combination i'm always looking for you know it's for those kinds of things that i grew up listening to whether it's led zeppelin or um you know or the beatles bands that can change that have a character to them that can change and be multiple things. And um, Tiger Cub really has that, um, that ability. They're, they're rooted in kind of heavy groove rock, um, mm -hmm. but they can also, um, you know, they're very, very talented and very knowledgeable musicians and can play some beautiful uh, quiet things as well. So it's that range. I, I love that about bands. I always have, um, you know, it's, it, I love ACDC too. You know what I mean? Like ACDC is the other end of that spectrum of just like somebody that really knows how to do one thing and they just, you know, they make it count every time. Um, but uh, Tiger Cub's a little bit more towards the Zeppelin range of things, you know, yeah. in terms of like they're ready to explore a little bit and kind of bring you on a journey. Could you do me a, a superhuman huge favor and sign King's X? Yeah, <laughs> I love, I, I mean, we've been King's X fans for years, you know, um and uh i think we we I mean we played shows with king's yeah. x pearl jam did and um th those guys are amazing and we were listening to king's x when we were in green river you know, I, I, back in, way I, back in the day so um uh love doug and the and the band that that's an awesome band are they still playing shows right now oh yeah yeah they just released okay. a new record i i was lucky enough to do a handful of shows uh when when i was um in the the in the performance side of the music industry way back uh, with faith oh, yeah. hope love and the faith hope love tour we did a few shows with them in south texas it was cool so i mean is there is there a more talented band i mean those guys are real no players man no crazy doubt. crazy yeah. players uh, aside from you know the absurdity of world domination uh in in a, in a real sense um what do you really hope to accomplish with tiger cub if you had a couple of uh blocks to check off here in the year 2023 what what would you end 2023 with and say wow that was a really successful year we did everything we wanted to accomplish at this point in time with this amount of time i think them you know i think them starting to break in the united states and really sort of you know getting they're going to be over here touring a lot they've had great response um, you know, I'd love to see them, um, have a couple of two or three successful singles here in the States. Mm -hmm. I think they'd be off and running at that point. I think that that would, you know, that they could write their own ticket after that. Um, they've already, uh, got a new management company. Um, so that's been a, that's huge for them, um, for them to have really support of a larger management company. That's really going to help them strategize and and be a partner with the with the label as well so 
again, we're, you know, we're kind of making it up as we go along a little bit in terms of where it can go, but I'm a dreamer. I mean, I, I, I've had so much uh, success in my life by just, you know, kind of imagining things and kind of working towards them and not necessarily having a big, um, you know, a, a exact game plan of what was going to happen or how it was going to happen. It's a little bit more whimsical. And mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, I, I keep trying to make that happen again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what did you contribute, if anything, to the band Tiger Cub? Or, or did you just really provide a platform um, for for the for the band and and a name and some credibility? Or were you in the trenches writing and recording, offering you know them direction on you know how what these songs should? No, sound? they're they're a they're a self contained uh, you know musical entity. We'll we'll pick you know they want us to get excited about specific songs we'll we'll tell them what ones are moving us but ultimately they're 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 really calling the shots for the most part um you know the the biggest thing that we're encouraging them to do is when they get burned out to make sure they they give themselves some time this is a marathon it's not a it's not a sprint and i think bands have a tendency to burn themselves out early and we'll try to do everything that everybody asks because people are always asking um for you to do more and um you know, part of what I wish that Pearl Jam had had earlier on is is somebody saying, hey, you know, you don't have to do this. You're just slow down. We got time or, you know, you guys are a good band. Just like, you know, let's let's go in and make another record and have some fun. And, you know, we'll, you know, don't kill yourself. So, um, you know, that's probably been the, the most important um, sort of voice that we've been to them. And just, you know, make sure that you're having fun, you know, um, it's it's that it's that you know there, there's always work to be done but i think it's important to remember that you started out doing this because it's fun and exciting and you yeah. know thrilling to be involved with creative stuff so making sure that that stays sort of central to what we're talking about stone where is the band based right now and are, are is there any talk of them you know relocating and calling seattle or los angeles or, or the u.s home I have not heard that. I, I don't expect that to happen, but you never know what's going to yeah. happen. They're they're UK. I think they're in Brighton, okay. um, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. And um, is that is that right, Billy Jean? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, right. That's right. Okay, yeah, Brighton. And um, yeah, they're uh, but they love America. I mean, they came over. You know, the English crowds can be. Uh, you know, even back in the day with Pearl Jam, it's like, you know, the English press and the English crowds, it can be a little standoffish over there because they're so freaking good and they always have great bands and they're just like, you know, they're they're used to greatness. So um, but the Tiger Cup came over here and they were just like being so loved up by and in opening slots for for clutch and for our highly suspect. And and um, and they were uh, they were they were excited about more American dates. So uh, our, our plan is to break them in America. That's what we hope. Dynamite, man. Tell me about the current vibe of the always interesting uh, Seattle scene. I mean, you've, you've been such an integral part of that. What is it like currently right now? Um, you know, I couldn't give you any assessment in terms of the, the scope of it, because like you said, it's, you know, <clears throat> between digital media and what's happening and who's streaming songs. There could be there's artists in C the Seattle area that are probably streaming, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of streams that I don't even know about. So um, I'm a I'm a bit of a shut in. I'll I'll get turned on to certain bands and certain projects and 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 sort of find myself pursuing them. Um, you know, Brittany Davis uh, is an artist uh, that's in Painted Shield, um, and they have a they have a solo record coming out, another solo record coming out. I think Brittany is one of the most fantastic singer songwriters I've ever worked with. More mm -hmm. in the R and B world, um, soul world, uh, but in that sort of um, you know uh real deal uh soul singer and um songwriter um you know so uh you know that that's for me that's that's something i'm very excited about but i've been working with britney now for about three years and um those are the kinds of things i, I get close to things and i just keep working on them you know and I'm, I'm not really looking around too much i've always been curious you know with the uh with that big explosion and the success of Nirvana, Alice in Chains, obviously Pearl Jam, um, and and how that had to change the nucleus of uh, Seattle back then, um, especially you know the darkness of drugs and suicide, and and it, did did any did anything come out of that in the positive as far as change for how 
the city and and the musicians and the venues and the promoters uh, jumping in to really support the locals and identify when there was a problem or a challenge? I, you know, it's a hard question to answer because I I, I don't feel like I'm on the front lines of that yeah. situation. So I, I, it would be, I, I don't feel necessarily comfortable. My, my guess is that things have changed for sure. I just think that the world is work more conscious of things in different ways than we were 20 years ago. It's just the, where, what the media is talking about, what, you know, businesses are talking about, what, you know, um, you know, what, what everyone's talking about that the dialogues have shifted. And I think there is a, uh, a dialogue that is um, more thoughtful about, um, you know, um, human um, uh, mental health and things like and drug and addiction and and the reality of 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 depression and and those kinds of things. So I think there probably is a lot more uh, avenues and a lot more openness to talking about that kind of stuff. But I'm sure there's still a lot of people doing a lot of drugs and you know and and beating themselves up as well. So and uh, stone. Miraculously, it really seemed, and especially looking back in retrospect, that Pearl Jam had a weird way of rising above a lot of that BS. Could you pinpoint something that was different about you and your brothers in Pearl Jam that uh, that, that was different from the structure of a Nirvana or an Alice in Chains that helped you guys, you know, not get mired down in all of that? I mean, I don't know. I think, you know, I think... First and foremost, I think, you know, heroin and, and opiates are they're really dangerous drugs in the sense mm -hmm. that you don't know how much you're getting and and they're very, very addictive. And so yeah. I think we avoided those um, miraculously, you know, um, I'm, there was I'm sure there was some experimentation, but I think, you know, pretty quickly we realized that that was not a that was not a path that was going to be helpful um, in regards to the band. Um, or success. So I, I think that that's a big deal and a and a and a, a valid point is just talking about specifically opiates in general and and how volatile they are um, and, yeah. and how powerful they are. But I also think our just our the nucleus of us joining together as a band was really based on hey we're going to do this together. We really we need each other. None of us are you know Ed's a you know Ed's a superstar, but everyone else in the band was sort of you know we're pretty good you know yeah. but but together you know, it was this sort of a little bit of the super friends you know kind of mentality or even maybe not the super friends but um you know we're stronger together um and I think that we just we bought into that and we and we stuck with it and I think that helped uh navigate some of the more difficult things is just feeling like you were part of something that was based on you know, some egalitarian principles. Yeah. And I, I can't speak for the other guys. I don't know. I don't know about the other guys, but Stone, it seemed like you had a pretty solid upbringing. You had some pretty solid parents. I don't think you were ever probably ever able to win an argument with your father who was a lawyer, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't remember winning too many arguments. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's, um, you know, that's good. Stone, thanks. Thanks again so much. I know you've got other uh, other interviews you got to go and, and take care of today. And I really appreciate the time and can't wait to see um, uh, you back out on the road with Pearl Jam. And of course, Tiger Cub. We got to get Tiger Cub here in Reno. And uh, I can't wait to see how these guys perform in the uh, live setting, man. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Take care. Talk soon. Bye.